Good morning slash afternoon. I know it's getting kind of close to both right now. Hopping on to do a quick word that God put on my heart kind of from a prayer time that we had last night. Um, but just in general, he was kind of expounding on that a little bit more in my personal prayer time with him this morning. And so I just wanted to hop on and get this out to you guys today. And this word is called too late miracles, too late miracles. And I think this is an exciting word. This is a word that should get us pumped. Um, and this is a word that I think will encourage a lot of people who have been feeling very weary, kind of, you know, with just being consistent and doing the right thing over and over and over again, and really just feeling like you're not seeing a lot of fruit behind that stuff. I think that this is a word that's going to really encourage you guys today. Um, and we're going to be straight out of the book of Luke. We're going to be in Luke chapter 5 today, if you guys are tuning in with your Bibles. And we're going to be talking about this really big catch of fish that the disciples ended up bringing in. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of chat with you guys through this story. Um, and really talk to you about kind of the timing and the significance of all of this as we dive into this word together. So, um... Basically, God in a prayer time last night gave a friend and I a vision of this huge catch of fish that was coming in. And there were all of these different analogies, stuff that I'm not really going to get into for time's sake on the purpose of this live here today. Um, but I did want to really hop on and kind of read the story to you, chat with you a little bit about the significance of this, and then talk to you guys about what God is saying right now with these two late miracles that he is trying to bring in. Amen. And so let's just start off with scripture and then we'll kind of elaborate as we go on this. Okay. So Luke chapter five, starting in verse one. It says, Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee. And he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down for them and were washing their nets. Okay, this is very significant. And I want to pause here and talk about the significance of this, okay? So these two boats were not actively in the water. They were already drawn up by the lake. Okay. In other words, they had given up. They were no longer fishing. They were no longer focused on the current assignment. You know, it said they had gone down for them and they were washing their nets. In other words, this was a true they had given up, right? They were washing the equipment off. You don't wash equipment off if you expect to go back out in the water. Amen. You know, they were truly considering themselves done for the day, night, etc. You know, for this particular outing that they had been on, right? So Jesus is kind of just doing his normal thing. He's teaching people, he's speaking to the crowds, he's doing all of this stuff. And it says that he saw two boats that were drawn up by the lake. Jesus kind of happens upon this situation of these people who had kind of just given up on their assignment. Now, keep in mind that this was their profession, okay? They were fishermen. These were not just, you know, kind of amateurs in the field, right? These were guys who were the top of their game, who knew how the fish interacted, you know, who had a lot of knowledge base kind of behind all of this, right? And so basically these two guys had these, you know, these boats drawn up by the lake and they were giving up for the day. Let's keep going. Verse three, and getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon Peter, he requested him to draw away a little from the shore. Then he sat down and continued to teach the crowd of people from the boat. Listen to verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water, lower your nets for a haul. Notice that he's saying go to the deep place. Amen. This is where the catch is going to come in, right? And so it's interesting because Jesus is telling them to do the exact opposite of what they were doing in the natural. Amen. He said, let's go back out. Let's face these circumstances again. And let's face this stuff that you guys had given up on in your personal life. Okay. Listen to verse five here. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we toiled all night exhaustingly and caught nothing in our nets. But at, the, excuse me, it says, but on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. Okay, this is where the word comes in today that God is really emphasizing. 
a lot of you guys have been in a season of toiling for a long time now in your personal life. You know, believing God for things, being faithful to do the right thing over and over and over again. We really had strong um, Joseph themes coming up as well, kind of in this prayer time that my friend and I got out of last night. And, you know, it, it's been seasons where it almost even felt like you were going backwards, right? Like you're putting forth all of this effort, all of this exertion, and it really just seems like there's not a lot of fruit to show from all of this stuff that you have been trying to put forth in your personal life. Amen. But what I love about this passage in verse five, it says, we toiled all night. Simon's talking to Jesus. Peter is. And it says exhaustingly. This is the place where I feel like a lot of people are at in the body of Christ. They're just exhausted. They're ready to give up. They're like, God, I have literally done everything that I knew, know to do over this situation. Like, I, I don't know what else to pray. I don't know what else to do, God, over these particular things. It just seems like nothing is budging. It just seems like nothing is moving in my circumstances. And for some of you guys, you haven't just been faithful for a small season. You've been faithful for years years with particular areas of your life where you quote unquote have not brought in that catch yet where you quote unquote have not stepped into the promises of God that you know he has promised you over specific areas of your life amen and this is very much the place that these guys were at now I want you guys to imagine this they were out there the entire night okay they toiled all night i don't know how many of you guys have been out fishing kind of recreationally before you know but if you're out there for even just a little while all night is a long time right especially if you're doing like commercial fishing like these guys were doing or it wasn't really commercialized like we think of it today you know but they were trying to bring in big catches of fish this was these guys it was their full-time occupation right and so the fact that they were toiling all night was probably rather labor intensive work right they might have been casting some nets out into the water you know there was probably a lot of navigating the boats around and keep in mind they don't have motors like we do today this is probably a lot of very hard physical labor types of stuff that these guys were up to and so when it says that they toiled amen that's a very that's a term that it almost feels kind of excruciating right how many of you guys have felt like you've been toiling in your life in this past season doing what you know to do doing the stuff that you've been told is going to work and it just seems like there's no fruit that is coming forth from your efforts amen this is very much what these guys were feeling in this moment they're tired they're exhausted and they had literally already given up on the promise they had said god there's no way that you can bring this in you know we've put all of this effort forth for hours after hours on end and they caught nothing so i want you guys to notice this i'm going to read you this verse again because i want you guys to catch this and simon peter answered master we toiled all night exhaustingly and cut caught nothing in our nets this was not normal i would imagine for these guys these are professional fishermen okay so the fact that they caught not even one fish when these guys are the experts in their field imagine how you know awful that must have felt right you know um they caught not even a single thing and yet jesus is telling them go back out i'm sure that in their minds they were like god are you just trying to torture us for believing for these promises again are you just trying to torture us you know for telling us to go out there why would you get our hopes up again god why would you do this in our personal lives why would you tell us to believe you for good things again do you see the track record on all of this stuff do you see how dead this stuff has looked for so long do you not see all of the effort that we put forth for such a long time over these particular things and we have seen not just a little bit of fruit we have seen zero fruit god like there is nothing <clears throat> going on in these particular circumstances right and so here's here's the last bit of faith that peter could muster in this moment i love that he says this he said even though we're toiling even though we're exhausted even though we've caught nothing even though it, by natural eyes it looks like we are really dumb for still believing you for these promises right it looks like it would be really dumb for us to try to launch back out one more time to try to believe you one more time for these promises that you have spoken over our lives it says but on the ground of your word we will lower our nets again. It's like that last little bit of effort and Peter's spirit came out. He was aligning his words in faith and he was going, God, I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense. This is really confusing to me. You know, this, this is really, you know, in a way kind of upsetting, you know, but 
if you say it, God, we'll give it one last shot over this particular thing. We'll give it one last try of believing you for this stuff. But God, it feels like it's too late. We've already pulled our boats up to shore. We've already washed the nets, God. You know, why wouldn't you have come through for us when we were already out on the lake? Hello, who am I talking to? Some of you guys, you feel like this today. God, why wouldn't you have come through over this situation before that bill was due? Why wouldn't you have come through over that relationship crisis before they asked me to get out of their life forever? God, why wouldn't you have helped me through this health crisis before I had to go have the surgery? When it feels like it's too late in your personal life. Amen. But what I love about this is I want to tell you guys that God is always right on time in your life. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And sometimes we don't always understand the timing of God. But when God promises you exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all you could ever ask, hope, or imagine in your personal life, he means it. Ladies and gents, he absolutely means it. And so at his word, amen, the disciples said, you know what, we'll go out and try one more time, I guess. You know, what's the harm in it? You know, we've, we've already been out here all night, but God, at your word, yeah, we'll give this another shot, right? Verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and as their nets were at the point of breaking. Wow. Talk about like a total and complete turnaround, right? In a moment, right? This was very much a suddenly that these guys were experiencing in their personal life, right? And so I want you guys to think about this in context. This is part of what God was talking to me about in a prayer time last night. These fish were always in this lake, amen, but it wasn't the appointed time for the catch. Amen. And this is part of why they were probably so frustrated because think about it. They're like, Jesus, we fished in this exact spot for hours. Like we've done this before God. Like we have literally been around this a gazillion times. Right. And yet it says, you know, at, but at the ground of your word, we will lower these nets for a catch. So the word of God goes forth over their situation. This is what you guys need to catch today. Some of you guys, the word of God is going forth over these dead situations, these dry situations in your personal life. The word of God is causing things to shift into alignment in your personal life. There are Kairos moments coming in your life, appointed time moments in your life where you've tried the same stuff that you're trying now, but now the hand of the Lord is on it. Now God is breaking through in these different areas of your life. And when God speaks and breathes over a situation in your personal life, life, things have to shift. You know, what I believe happened, you know, they were doing, the disciples were doing the same thing they were doing before. The only difference was Jesus commanded the fish to come to their boat. Who am I talking to today? That's the difference. Some of you guys, God is ordering resources behind the scenes. Amen. Some of you guys, God is fighting on your behalf when it seems the most dead, when it seems the most dry in your personal life. God is calling forth these resources and he's saying, because they didn't give up, because they chose to believe me at my word, even when it felt like it was quote unquote too late in their personal life, because they chose to keep the faith, because they believed in me and my faithfulness even more than they believed in the promise and in their circumstances because they chose to keep their trust in me. There are some too late miracles that God is wanting to bring forth in people's personal lives. And so here's what I love about this. It says, and when they had done this, he told them where to lower the nets, right? This is where you've got to stay in your prayer closet and listen because God will download divine strategy to you on how to see breakthrough in your circumstances. Amen. And it's going to be different for you than it might be for somebody else. You know, this is why, you know, corporate words are good. Us getting on here talking about Jesus together, this is good stuff. There's nothing wrong with this. It helps us, right? However, you've got to have your own personal walk with God because God could speak something very specific specific to your situation that you need for your personal breakthrough. Amen. And so God tells them where to lower these nets in their personal life, right? And it says, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Okay. Talk about crazy, right? They went from none to overflow in their personal lives. Ladies and gents, God can do it. And he wants to do that for you and your personal life. Amen. God came to give you life and life more. What? abundantly. What does abundance mean? It means that he's not just meeting the bare minimum needs in your personal life. It means that there's overflow. It means that there's supernatural provision. It means that God is coming through for you in a mighty way and miracles in your personal life. Amen. And so it says they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. Okay. I want to tell you guys, 
it takes a lot to do that to a fisherman's net. These things are designed to carry a lot of weight behind them. Amen. This shows you the extent of the catch that they could bring in, you know, and God looks to see how much you can handle in your personal life. Amen. He looks to see where you're at, how much you can handle in your circumstances. And so for these guys, he knew the exact weight, quote unquote, that these nets could handle. He knew the exact capacity that these nets could handle. And he goes, you know what? I'm not just going to fill them to capacity. I'm going to fill them until they're almost not even able to handle all of this. Amen. That's what the overflow of God looks like when he begins to hit your life, when he begins to hit your circumstances with the overflow. Amen. And so it says there were a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. In other words, they're like, we've got to call for help. We've got to get additional resources. This catch, quote unquote, this level of blessing is so huge in our personal lives that we can't even sustain it on our own. God's going to have to call in additional people to partner with us. He's going to have to call in some extra resources to help us to bring in this catch, quote unquote, in our personal lives, right? And so verse seven, it says they signaled to their partners and the other boat to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled the boat so that they began to sink. You guys hear me all the time talk about the weightiness of the blessing, that God's been having some of you guys do some bench pressing in this season. Amen. He has been increasing your spiritual capacity to the weight limit of some of these blessings that he is trying to gift you with in your personal life. Some of you guys, your character has been developed behind the scenes. Some of you guys have been through some trials. You've been through some storms. You've been through some stuff that the enemy meant to take you out, but God has worked it for your good. And you know what? It would have been better if the enemy never touched you in a lot of these areas of your life. Amen. Because all he was doing was getting you stronger. All he was doing was increasing your capacity to handle greater blessing. He was increasing your weight limit every time that he tried to take you out, but you still hung in there. Every time that he tried to wipe out your promises, to wipe out your circumstances, every single time that he brought delay into your personal life, God's going, they just added 20 more pounds. They just added 40 more pounds. They just added 60 more pounds. And so now you're not just running with all of these lightweights, quote unquote, at the gym. You're not just running with all of these baby Christians anymore who are only able to handle so much in their personal lives, but because you stayed faithful, because you've let God process you in these different areas, now these next level catches, these next level blessings are able to enter into your life because you are now able to sustain them. You know, part of what I love about the scripture that God was also pointing out is he let them get to the point where they were no longer relying on their own strength. Who am I talking to today? Amen. You know, what's interesting is when they were relying on their own strength and when they were trying to do things without the word of God spoken over their situation, there was a word called toiling that the Bible mentioned. Amen. A lot of people have spent this past season toiling, trying to do things in their own strength, trying to figure out how God's going to move, trying to force situations into alignment, trying to make stuff come into play, you know, and God's going, it's the moment when you gave it up when I can move. Amen. I want you guys to notice this. The disciples had given up completely when God chose to come on the scenes of their circumstances. Amen. They had taken their hands off of it completely. You know why God chose to move in that moment? It's so that he could get the glory. Amen. So that they couldn't say that they're toiling their effort, they're all of this stuff. So that they couldn't say that they did it. God's going, I'm going to supernaturally move. I am your provider. I am the one who comes on the scene for you and your personal life. I am your redeemer. I am your restorer. I am the one who meets all of your needs. Amen. And so he goes in this season, you're going to start to know that I am, I am. I had to get you to the end of your strength. That toiling season had a purpose in your personal life, and it still has had a purpose in your personal life. Because a lot of times God will let us wear ourselves out, quote unquote, get to the end of our rope, realize there's nothing we can do, get in circumstances that look so awful, so dead, so bad in our personal lives. And that's when he chooses to kick onto the scene because he's going, you know what? My strength is now made perfect in your weakness. Amen. Now you're going to know that I am God in your life and you are not the God of your own life. Life. You've been trying to be the God of your own life, little G, right? But he's going, that's never the place that I intended for you to be. I'm going to teach you to start walking by faith. 
in your personal life. I'm going to teach you to start launching into the things that I have for you, the callings, the opportunities, the things that I have. And as long as you're trying to still do things your own strength and in your own way, I can't give you the fullness of what I have for you. I can't give you these big, heavy hitter promises in your personal life. You have got to learn how to rely on me. You have got to learn how to rely on my strength. You've got to learn that I've got your best interests at heart. Amen. You've got to learn that I am faithful over your personal life. And so sometimes God will let us run our wheels and our sweet little noggins, right? He will let us absolutely get ourselves all that worked up junk out of our system until we're just exhausted. We're tired. We give it up and we finally say, God, let your will be done. And he goes, perfect. It's time. Amen. And for a lot of you guys, that's the place that you've been in. You're like, God, I literally give up. I have no idea what else to do. You know, I am the most tired I've ever been. I've toiled the most that I've ever toiled in my life. None of my strategies are working. And he goes, congratulations. It's now time for you to step into the promise. Amen. And this is where a lot of you guys are at. God is saying, congratulations. In the place of you being most weary, in the place of you not understanding the most, in the place of your toiling, in the place where you have just literally given up and said, you know what, God, even if this thing doesn't come to pass the way that I thought it would, I'm still going to serve you. Even if it looks different than I thought, God, I know that your plans for me are so good that I'm going to choose to put my trust in you regardless. Even if I don't understand the inner workings, you know, or the time timing or all of this stuff over this situation. God, I choose to believe that you're still faithful in my personal life. And God goes, that's the exact place that I needed you to be. Amen. He goes, watch me move. Watch me work over your circumstances. You are not forgotten about. I'm not going to leave you abandoned in the midst of all of this. God has an abundance of fish. He has a great catch that he is wanting to bring into your personal life. But for some of you guys, he was just waiting on you to give up. He's like, give it up to me. Trust that I've got these different areas of your life. And it's not saying that we give up on God, but what it is saying is we give up on trying to do everything in our own strength, trying to figure everything out, trying to toil, trying to strive for things, you know, trying to use logic and reasoning to try to figure out how we're gonna get from point A to point B. God's going, would you just rest? Would you rest? I've got you, ladies and gents, I've got you over these circumstances. You keep your focus on me. You just be obedient to what I tell you to. Isn't it interesting that throughout this whole interaction with the disciples in this catch of fish, they didn't have to ask God for the catch. He directed them to it. Amen. And some of you guys have been afraid that you're going to miss it. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Some of you guys have literally had this exact prayer and discussion with God going, God, I'm afraid I'm going to miss it. I'm afraid I'm going to overlook your voice over my circumstances. I'm afraid I'm going to overlook the promises. And God's going, you're not going to overlook it. I'm directing you to it. Amen. They didn't even have to ask. God knew this desire of their heart even when they didn't know this desire of their heart. That's how deeply and how intimately God knows you, ladies and gentlemen. And so what he did was he directed them to the promise at the appointed time. Amen. He's kind of like set off alarm bells in their mind going, hello, look, it's over here, right? The catch is right here. This is where the fish are gathering. This is where the fish are at. And so as long as you're staying close to God, he will give you direction at the appointed time for how to step into the promises that he has for you in your personal life. Notice all the disciples had to do was to be obedient. When the word of God came forth over their circumstances, they didn't try to logic their way through. They didn't try to reason their way through this stuff. They just were obedient to the simple thing that God told them to do. He said, do this thing. You know, for some of you guys, that step of obedience could be go to the doctor one more time. You know, write one more email. Talk to this person one more time. Pray for this person one more time. You know, apply for this job one more time. Whatever this looks like, ladies and gents, that one more time when, it's, when the word of God is on that thing can make all the difference in the world ladies and gents, when it's the appointed time, things that didn't work out for you in the past come forth in a different way because God's hand is on it this time, ladies and gents. And you know, what the devil tries to get you to do is for you to give up the promise. Amen. He tries to get you so discouraged. He tries to get you so weary that when God tells you to launch out one more time over that thing, you go, no, I'm done. I'm so tired of this, God. I'm so tired of the disappointment. I'm so tired of the weariness. You know, I just give up. I'm not going to do it one more time. And God's going, that one more time could be connected to your destiny. And I want to encourage some of you guys today. Don't give up on that one more time 
moment in your life. I know some of you guys have been toiling. You've been doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, and it feels like there is zero fruit coming forth in these different areas of your life. I want to tell you guys the difference is when the word of God is on that thing, everything changes, ladies and gents. And for some of you guys, you need to understand that God has been preparing you for this exact moment in your personal life. And it is different. I don't care if you're walking through the same exact steps that you've done 20 different times in the past. Amen. When the word of God is on it, when it is his appointed time over your personal life, everything changes. Amen. And so it's often when we release these things in our personal life. It's often when we try to get our tight grip off of situations, when we quit trying to figure it out, when we just say, God, have your way, that's when he moves in and he goes, okay, now I'm going to start to accelerate some stuff. Now I'm going to start to launch some things in your personal life, right? And so it's when we try to quit doing things in our own strength a lot of the time that God begins to move. These disciples had 110% given up over this. They were washing their nets. And that's when God chose to come on the scene. A too late miracle began to transpire. Amen. But I want to tell you guys, when God hits the scene of your life, it's never too late, ladies and gents. I don't care what the report is in the natural. Doctors may have told you this is a terminal disease. You're going to die from this. It's never too late with God, ladies and gents. They could have told you you have one more day to live. It's never too late with God. Amen. That financial situation may look impossible. It may look like something that could never get turned around. It's never too late with God, ladies and gents, whatever it is that you're facing, pick an area, right? It is never too late with God. Amen. So what I love about this in verse seven, it says they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to take hold of with them and they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink this is so powerful ladies and gents both of the boats were so filled to overflow that they began to sink listen to me ladies and gents when god hits this blessing on your life it's not only going to affect you it's going to be overflow so that you can choose to go and to bless and to help other people isn't that powerful ladies and gents there's going to be some overflow that not only helps them but that helps others in your personal life. Amen. And so this is what God wants to do for you in your personal life. This is how God is going to move on your particular situation. Amen. He's not only going to have overflow for your family, but you may be able to bless others in the process as well from this, the weightiness of this blessing. You know, that's why there's been so much warfare for some of you guys connected to these things that you've been believing God for. Amen. That's why there has been so much because it's not just your blessing that this is affecting, ladies and gents. It's affecting your friends. It's affecting your family. There are other people's breakthroughs that are tied to your breakthrough in this season of your personal life. That's why the warfare has been so strong. That's why Satan has been trying to push back on you to cause you to give up right before the promise is supposed to come forth. That's why there's so much on this because it's not just your boat, ladies and gents, that is affected. It is also your neighbor's boat, quote unquote, that is going to get filled to to overflow and is affected through this whole process. Amen. And so basically these boats began to sink. Verse eight says, but when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus's knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord, for he was gripped with bewilderment and amazement allied to terror. Wow. And all who were with him at the hall of fish at which they had made. In other words, I want you guys to think about this. This is the place a lot of you guys are in right now. You have seen nothing in your personal life. Nothing, right? It's been dead for forever. And then when this huge catch comes into your life, when you finally see these things that you have been contending and believing for that God has promised over your personal life, for a lot of you guys, you're going to go, wow, God, I am so sorry for my lack of faith. You mean you really were this good the whole time? You really mean that you were in working me in progress this whole time towards these things? You really mean to tell me that you didn't forget about me in this whole process and in these whole circumstances? 
circumstances and God's going, yes, I didn't forget about you. Amen. And for some of you guys, this is just a gentle reminder this morning on hopping on to tell you that God did not forget about you. He hasn't forgotten about you, ladies and gents. He loves you. He's been working behind the scenes. He sees those days and those nights where you have been toiling in the midst of all of this. He sees all of this stuff in your personal life, ladies and gents. And I want to tell you today, he has not forgotten about you. Amen. And I want to tell you as well that in the midst of this catch, you know, these miracles might seem like they're too late. It may seem like God doesn't care, like he's got a hardened heart towards you because it hasn't happened in the timing or in the way that you thought it would. Ladies and gents, he's right on time. He knows what he's doing in your personal life. Amen. And he is able to bring divine resurrection from dead looking situations in your personal life. There were zero fish ladies and gents, when they first tried this. But at the moment that God spoke his word over their situation, there was a catch that was so great they had never seen anything like it before. Ladies and gents, don't you dare give up on the promises of God that he has for you in this season. Maybe you've never seen him work like this before in your entire life. I want to tell you guys, it's who he is. It's the goodness of his character. It's the goodness of his nature. And I want you guys to notice that God blessed them not because the disciples were so awesome, not because they were so good. They were sinners just like you and me. Amen. He blessed them because they were good. He noticed the need before they ever noticed the need in their own personal lives. Amen. And he chose to bring in that catch for them. Amen. That's the goodness of our Father. Amen. And it's in these prolonged waiting seasons where the devil tries to get you to give up your authority over a situation where he tries to get you to release your grip over the promises. So at the last second, right before your catch is supposed to come in, you will give up and say, you know what? I'm not going to be obedient this time. I'm not going to be obedient to what God's calling me to do. Don't let that be you, ladies and gents. One moment can change everything in your personal life. And so, you know, that's what God was showing us in this prayer time is that for a lot of you guys, there's a large catch of fish that's coming. Amen. And it's going to seem very ordinary. It's going to seem very mundane. It's going to seem like the exact same stuff that you guys have been doing for a long season and not getting any fruit. But I want to tell you guys, when you're faithful with the little things, God can then make you a ruler over much. And for a lot of you guys, that is exactly what God is trying to step you into in this season. Amen. So be encouraged and don't lose hope. That catch is coming in your personal life. He has not forgotten about you in all of these different areas. And if you've given up hope on some situations, I want to tell you guys, God is on the move. Amen. Be obedient one last time. Hope you guys have a great day. I will chat with you again soon.